we know that when we have an object on an incline that is steep enough that object is going to start to move down but not just move down actually accelerate downwards the longer we leave it the faster it will travel down which means that is it is accelerating down the slope which means that this acceleration is caused by a resultant force now because there's a resultant force on this object we want to know what it what is it a result of what are the forces acting on it and if we know what are the forces are that's acting on it we can go and calculate this resultant force so let's go and see what are the forces that's acting on it using all of this knowledge that we've now uh, put together okay again just look at a at a normal slope a vertical as a horizontal slope with an object on that horizontal slope we've already said that that object has a downward mass uh, weight sorry there's our weight that is down and we know that that weight can be calculated by taking the mass of the object multiplied by gravitational acceleration we also notice that this is not moving which means the resultant the resultant force is equal to zero okay what that simply means is there must be another force that is acting against the weight and this would be the force offered by the surface called the normal force let's call it capital N okay so it's the same in magnitude than W but in the opposite direction in other words it's negative W whatever we get for mass times gravitational acceleration we just put a negative in front that will give us the normal force here but now what is going to happen if we actually lift up the surface so you know that if you put something on a surface and you are able to slant that surface at some point this object is going to start to slide down the surface so let's imagine that surface is super smooth okay so that even if you just lift it slightly the object will start sliding down now we've just said that if that object starts sliding down it means that there is a force okay that is in the direction of the slope down the direction of the slope why is that so why have we gone from a resultant force of zero to suddenly as a resultant force that is actually acting against uh, or down the slope well think of it like this if we have our weight which we said was down vertically down there is our weight we don't have the force the normal force in the same direct or in the opposite direction of the weight anymore okay now all of a sudden the normal force is acting in this direction okay I'm struggling with a straight line there but there we go there's the normal force that is now what is perpendicular to the surface now if I take that normal force the vector sum of this and that so if I add those two vectors placing them head to tail what do I get well all I need to do is take this vector okay let me try and redraw that vector as best I can okay there's the normal force okay to his head I place this weights tail so there I place the tail okay against the head of that one and a little bit far okay about there and what do I find what is the resultant on the picture I can see there's the resultant force okay causing an acceleration downwards and that is the resultant force that I will get when I place when I go from this start to that end okay so what I will have to be able to go and do to calculate this resultant force is to find the normal force and also if I can find the normal force then I will also be able to find this force this resultant force okay why why will I be able to do that well one thing that you should notice is that the force the resultant force is parallel to the surface in other words that makes a 90 degree angle with the normal force and if that makes a 90 degree angle with the normal force then we have a 90 degree triangle here okay 
and we have a 90 degree triangle, all we need is one of these two angles and then since we know W, we know this length, we can find the other two lengths using sine and cos. Okay, so let's go and do that. Let's go and see how all of this works out. So here's my surface again. Okay, there's my object on the surface. And let's say the angle that this surface is making with the horizontal is theta degrees. In other words, I know the degree of the slope. And I also know the weight of this object, or the mass, but I also know uh, with mass I can work out weight, so I know the weight. What I want to do is break this weight up into two components. I want to see how much of the weight is perpendicular to the surface. In other words, I break it up in this component that is perpendicular to the surface and I break it up into another component look how the two purple ones add up vector addition to give me the green one okay so this is the weight that is perpendicular to the surface and this is the weight that is parallel to the surface now the weight that is parallel to the surface is actually what's causing it to slide down because the weight that is perpendicular to the surface is being counted by the surface itself because remember the normal force so the normal force is equal to the weight that is parallel to the surface simply in the opposite direction So all we need to do is be able to calculate W parallel, in other words, weight parallel to the surface. How will we do that using sine and cos? Well, all we are going to need is this angle here. And that angle is also equal to theta. Why is that angle equal to theta? Well, let's go see. First of all, notice that here we have a triangle. There we have a triangle. Okay. And in this triangle, we notice that we have theta and we have that 90 degrees. So this angle right here, if I draw it out there, is 90 degrees minus theta. Obviously, okay, these two angles must add up to 90 degrees because all three of them must be 180. Okay. And since this is 90, these two together should be 90 also. If I know that one is theta, I can take 90 minus theta to get that angle. Okay, now if that is 90 minus theta and the slope and W parallel to the slope, these two are parallel lines, then notice the Z here. Do you notice the Z? There we go, the Z. Okay, going down here, and sorry, this sketch is getting messy now. Okay, but notice the Z. Okay, and hopefully you remember from, I think it's probably grade 9 maths, that this angle and that angle must be the same. Which means that if that one is 90 minus theta, then this one must be 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, and since these two, W parallel and W perpendicular, since they make a 90 degree triangle, then we just have a similar triangle than this one which means all of the angles are the same because two of the angles are the same. Okay, Two of the angles are the same which means the third one must be the same because of the uh, they add up to 190 or simply because that is 90 these two must add up to 90. If this one is 90 minus theta then it must mean that that one is equal to theta. Okay, so I'm almost finished. We're almost getting to the climax and I'm sure I'm almost losing you, but stick with me for a little while longer. Okay, so let's just redraw this so that we can do the maths. So there we have our weight that is perpendicular to the surface. The weight that is perpendicular. In blue, let's draw the weight that is parallel to the surface. In other words, this will be the one that causes the downward slide. Okay, And then obviously we have the original weight that is just vertically down. Vertically down, that was the original weight. And we know that these two weights made a 90 degree angle. 
and that one is theta. Now if that is theta, then it means this one is opposite, and that one is perpendicular. Oh, sorry, uh, adjacent, that's adjacent, this is opposite, and therefore we can see that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So W is hypotenuse, so we have weight that is parallel to the surface divided by the weight, okay, the hypotenuse. And if I multiply both sides with a W, we find that on this side it cancels, so we have the weight that is parallel to the surface is equal to W sine theta. And I'm not going to do the calculations, I urge you to do it, but then W perpendicular will equal W cos theta, which means the normal force that is acting against the weight that's perpendicular to the surface will just be negative that because it's the same size but in opposite direction. Okay, and this is what's countering that one and therefore this is the resultant force. So what we now have summarized that the resultant force is equal to the weight of the object plus the normal uh, force. Okay, so there's the object, there's two forces acting on it, the weight and the normal force. So the resultant force is adding these two vectors. Okay, but then we see, okay, the vector W can be uh, um, divided into two components, the weight that is perpendicular to the surface plus the weight that is parallel to the surface plus the normal force. And then we saw, but these two are the same in size but in opposite directions, which means that they cancel one another out. Okay. And therefore our resultant force would simply be the weight parallel to the surface. So what if there were additional friction? What if this thing was not moving? Even if it was not a slanted surface, what is causing it to stay up? Well, if you can imagine that if it's not moving, then the resultant force is equal to zero. Now if there was friction, then we should have said that the resultant force is equal to the weight plus the normal force plus friction. Okay, and then we saw well this this part of that equation just simply comes down to that. And if it's not moving, then the resultant force is zero. So then we get that this part simplifies to simply the weight parallel to the surface plus friction and this will now simply mean that the weight that is parallel to the surface will equal and if we subtract this on both sides then we get a negative F on the other side and what does this mean? Well it just means that the friction that is involved is the same in magnitude than the weight that is parallel to the surface but in the opposite direction and that makes perfect sense so in other words we will have W parallel to the surface and friction that's the same equal to negative W parallel so friction is the same in magnitude that will be the friction but in the opposite direction I hope I really didn't keep this too theoretical, but that you can actually follow the explanation and on top of that be able to do some examples. So in the next videos we'll look at some of these um, actually in examples. See you there.